Welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I am going to talk about two wines that I've found so far this year that are my favorite wines. Now, how do I know they're my favorite wines? I rarely, rarely buy the same bottle of wine more than twice. And well, partly because I, you know, because I'm in the wine business, I'm at a store, I get a lot of samples, people sampling me on wine all the time. And, you know, I get some PR companies send me wine sometimes to sample. So I have lots of wines to try, uh, and, and I have no time to be buying the same wine over and over again. But these two wines I've discovered, are, I'm just so excited about. They're both red wines, and I, I, I just am stoked about these wines. What else can I say? Uh, what we're going to start with is a, um, and, and here's the other thing, they're, they're both under $20. That's exciting as well, you know, I'm always looking for good values. And I do a list of wines at the end of every year, top 40 wines under $20, and I'm fairly confident that unless the vintage changes on these soon, um, these will be on my list. And I say the vintage change because I don't like to pick wines that you can't get. But even if the vintage changes, I'm going to try them again because I'm pretty confident that these wines will be good in the next vintage as well. This is a Terra Giomara Frappato Norella, Norella Mascalese Terra Siciliani. And this rolls in at $18. Boom! There's the label. Now, you're saying, what is that all about? Well, the two grapes in this wine are Frappato and Norella Mascalese. Those are two grapes that grow on, in Sicily. And they're 50-50. So 50% of each one. Frappato is a lighter style wine used for blending mostly. They blend it a lot with a Norello, uh, Nero Diavolo. Excuse me. Um, and Norello Mascalese is usually grown... Uh, on the uh, west side of Mount Etna and it's volcanic soil uh, great complexity these wines these uh, this grape is uh, highly sought after and has become quite popular I think it's, it has another uh, grape that's called Norella Capuccia I believe is how it's said but this is Norella Mascalese so it has good complexity it's darker skinned blended with frappato and I tell you, the first time I tried this wine, I was so stoked. I just like, really? So I'm going to review it for you so you can see what I'm stoked about, right? And isn't it always fun to try new wines? I mean, I love finding things like this, little gems that normally you would look at it. And You know, the thing about European labels a lot of times, you know, how many people have ever heard of Frappato? Have you ever heard of Frappato? I actually have a Frappato, just straight up a uh, varietal in, in my little room over here. And uh, I've just started to really dig into Norella Mascalese. Um, so anyway, I can smell this wine. This is 2016, it rolls into $18. 2016. Let's see what we get on the nose. So it just has that kind of earthy, uh, I get a little... It's very perfumed. It almost smells like I'm, I have my nose in a bunch of flowers, a bunch of red flowers. Get a little bit of licorice. A little bit of chocolate. It's a nice, almost a cranberry element with uh, blackberries, like cranberry blackberry juice. But I like it, a little tobacco as well with the earth, you know, and you can just smell that. It's like a, in those flowers, amazing. Very, very aromatic. Let's see what we get on the palate. It has a nice lift on the palate. I should really put something in my mouth before I did this review, but a nice lift, good acidity, but balanced. It's not mouth puckering, it just has a nice bright lift on it. You get um, the cranberry element comes through underneath. 
Uh, but you also get the blackberry, a little bit of plum too, red plum. The minerality, which I like. Just a really nice, almost crunchy. You can tell it has a frappato in it because frappato is very low in tannins, whereas Norella Masculis, you might have a little bit more in the tannin structure. Talk about a good food wine. Great with ribs, lamb especially. This would be fantastic with lamb. I love the the, um, the brightness without being acidic. You know, I mean, there's acid there, obviously, that gives it the brightness. But I like that cranberry, blackberry, plum combination. I almost said plum on the nose. I should have went with my gut there. And a nice and... Uh, how do I describe it uh, to help you out here? I, I like the lift. I like the brightness, I like the fruit, I like the minerality, a uh, little bit of leather, you get a leather leather hit on the mid, mid palette. It's like pureed red flowers and cranberries and blackberries and red plum. I get the licorice barely coming through there. Um, yeah. Oh. You have this with food, it just really, really um, complements the food quite a bit. And the food complements the wine as well. Yeah, it's, it has an earthiness and a brightness and, a, and the, the fruitiness that just make it a well-rounded wine. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to like this wine. That's for sure. Um, it might be a little too mouth-watering bright. I don't know. If you're looking for a big fruity wine, big rich fruity wine, this is not it. This is just very elegant. Dances on its feet lightly with, with good flavors. It, it might remind you a little bit of a Beaujolais Village, but different. It has that earthiness, that volcanic soil really gives it a different flavor profile that I really like. Yeah, and it almost has like a, a blood component in it that's kind of buried in, in all the elements. It's a very complex wine, very interesting, very food friendly, but you could drink it by itself. And as this opens up more and more, I've had it when it's been open two or three hours. This is about my fourth or fifth bottle that I've had of this wine. I like it that much. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you, um, tier, I'll say it one more time, Terra di Giamara. Uh, Frappato Norello Mascalese. Isn't that just cool to say Norello Mascalese? It's just so cool. I like it. From Sicily, the biggest island off the coast of Italy. I'm going go, to go A. Straight up A. It's a solid wine. Good complexity. Good integration. Uh, smooth, but bright at the same time. Easy to drink, but complex. I love that in a wine. Love it. Let's move on to the next one. Now I've recommended this, both these wines to the customers and almost every time they came back for more. That's always a good sign for me. 2016 Lafage Narasa. This is uh, about 70% Grenache, 30% Syrah. I couldn't find this exact vintage, but in 17 it's that. So I'm imagining they stay pretty close to that. This is from uh, the Languedoc Roussillon region specifically Cote Carlanis in the Languedoc region of southern France. Now this is really close to the Pyrenees, uh, so very respected area in the Languedoc Roussillon uh, region of southern France. Let's see what we get on the night. So I'll try to show it to you. This is uh, $17. Cool label. Now I've recommended this to a couple guys and they just just go nuts over it. Let's see what we get on those. Has a little bit of caramel coming through. Currants. I get a, a baking spice thing, which I, I like. I get a little bit of strawberry, a little bit of plum. Earthiness. I like that, that kind of uh, old dirt. 
It's a little chocolate as well. Interesting that they both have chocolate on the nose. I didn't get any chocolate on the palate of the other one. Some currant as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. Love the nose on this. The exact opposite of this. Big fruit, but very, rest I mean, it's held down. It just has that nice currant plum of a strawberry underneath. And spicy. I love the spice. That comes from the Grenache. Very common to get spice from Grenache. Good balance. Soft tannins, but structured. So it starts off with this nice fruit of, of like I said, like currants and plums and a little bit of strawberry, ripe strawberry. And then it morphs a little bit through the mid palate. You get tobacco starts showing up. And then the tobacco really comes through on the finish. And underneath it, you have a little bit of that um, mineral for, uh, dirt, uh, earth element coming through, dirt, whatever you want to say. The strawberry notes are more uh, uh, obvious on the mid palate, into the finish, where tobacco just kind of really, really takes over. And as many times as you watch my episodes, you'll notice I've mentioned tobacco a lot. And when it has tobacco in it, I kind of get excited about that. Um, hopefully, at some point, if you want to um, experiment with this, you'll understand the tobacco uh, uh, component that comes through. Just a really nice wine, and, and then the tannins are so nicely integrated, and they come out a little bit at the end, you know, a little bit of minerality on this wine, but just, this is one of those wines, that a New World wine drinker, somebody who drinks Napa Cabs, or Washington Syrahs, or Oregon Pinot Noirs, will like this wine, because it has that fruit, but at the same time, as it has um, good structure, good integration, it's just a beautiful wine, and it finishes spicy. Very excited about this wine and this one for very different reasons. Almost the yin and the yang, you know what I mean? A little bit of leather on the backside. Love that wine. I'm going to go AA plus on that. I just think it's a solid wine. A, AA plus. Not often do I run across wines this time of year that excite me this much, and I'm very excited about these wines. So get your hands on one of these. I would suggest that they're under $20, um, very affordable wines, and very good. You know, you can do this without food, but this would be great with steak, I'm just saying. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it very much. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.